Hello once again guys, you're watching High Voltage Mayhem and today I want to bring you a video on some old civil defense equipment I found the other day. So what we have here in front of us is two civil defense dosimeters and the charging unit that goes with them. So together this is a pretty interesting unit because we have these little pocket dosimeters that you would carry with you in the event of a nuclear explosion. They would let you know how much radiation you've been exposed to over a given period of time. So that's why these things would be useful. However, once they're used or you've been exposed to substantial radiation, they won't go back to their original state. And I'll explain that in a minute. So that's why this charger comes in handy and actually allows you to reset them so that they can be used once again. So let's go into the operation of how these things work and we'll take them all apart and see what we can do to fix it and how to use it if you happen to come across one of these things. So here's a close look at the actual dosimeter itself. The first thing you'll see when we take a look at this device is that we've got the Civil Defense logo printed right here on the side, and we've also got its manufacturer, Bendix. Well, Bendix was a good manufacturer in the World War II era because they made a lot of things like engine order telegraphs for ships and all kinds of electronic equipment. And, of course, they also made this radiation device for Civil Defense to distribute in the event of an emergency. So here, well, let's take a look at the actual thing itself. So it's all made out of metal. However, it is not as heavy as one might suspect. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a normal pin for comparison. As you can see, it's not quite that big. It's just shy of a normal pin, and it's not all that heavy. So let's take a look at how this thing works. The first thing you'll see is if this camera will focus, there's a little lens right there in the top. And that little lens is an actual microscope lens that allows you to view the scale that is found on the inside. And that scale just shows you how much radiation you've been exposed to over time. And on this end, we'll take a look. There's actually a charging contact. You can see the little center pin in there. And that little center pin is the uh, charging contact. And then, of course, the metal ring is ground. So this is an actual electronic device. And I'll get into its operation here in just a second. Alright, so I'm going to give you a brief description of how one of these dosimeters work. So if we take a look at the thing, when I showed you there was a little lens right here. I visualized this little lens right here, and there's a scale. Now what that scale is, is it's basically just a flat sheet of plastic with printed on there labels. So from 0 to say 200, or however many uh, Rinkins, or if that's how you pronounce it, the unit of radiation that this thing is measuring, either Miller Rinkins or Rinkins. So we have that unit of measure on the scale. Now the next thing we have is an objective lens on the inside here, and that magnifies a tiny little fiber on the inside. Now that fiber is the whole key to this unit's operation, because without that, this thing would be dead, and it wouldn't do us any good whatsoever. So the first thing we have to take a look at is how this little fiber works. So when a voltage is applied to the fiber, it wants to move and twist. You know, you can add a voltage to crystals. You know, we got crystal oscillators and all these kind of things that pertain with crystals, but in this case, we're dealing with a little fiber. So when we apply a voltage, it moves to a certain position. Well, here's the deal. When radiation flies and bombards this little device, and it goes through you, of course, this dosimeter will actually change state. So the crystal will move over kind of like this on the scale. It will move over ever so slightly because it wants to return to the state that it was before we charged it. So that means that the scale that we read is then multiplied. So that shows you an increase of radiation over time. And since this crystal won't go back to its original position, we have to use the charger to reset this. So I will get into showing you how to charge this and reset it um, if you were to be exposed to radiation. Which in this day and age, we really don't get you know atomic era of radiation going through us very often. So I hope we won't have to use that, but I will show you how to do it. So in other words, when power is applied to the contacts, it charges up that crystal there, it causes it to move, and, and you can vary the voltage on the knob, and that will vary the position of the, of the little fiber here, and then that allows you to see it. So basically, you use these lenses to amplify what you're looking at so you can see the tiny little booger in there. So that's how it works. Now let's take a look at the actual charging device, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's take a look inside this unit and see what goes on. So the first thing we'll want to do is loosen this screw right here until it pops, and then we'll raise the top unit off just like this. And now if we look on the inside, we've got the little mounting bracket where the screw goes, and we've also got the circuit schematic. So if I pull this back, you can kind of see the circuit schematic on the inside. And then we've also got a typical warning about leaving batteries in there because that has a tendency to corrode. 
So let's take a look at this actual device itself and see how it works. So the first thing you'll see when you look around is that there's an incandescent lamp right here. That's actually a spare light bulb, so this has nothing to do with its operation. Rather, it's just stuffed in a grommet. Next thing you'll see is there's an incandescent lamp found right here. That's for actually viewing the dosimeter whenever you want to check how much radiation you've been exposed to. Say in a dark room or in a bunker with no lights, this thing will provide light for you to see it and to adjust the uh, scale. So, we've also got a big power capacitor here, and we've got the actual screw contact there that goes into the case. Now, let's talk about batteries for just a minute. This takes one D-cell battery, and of course, we hook the battery right here and here. This is positive, and this is negative, so the polarity is labeled on this printed circuit board. Now, let's take a look on the other side, and we'll see what goes on over there. So when we take a look at the side here, of course you'll always notice that the civil defense equipment is watertight, so it's got the seal going all the way around the edges, so you can throw it in the lake and whatnot, and it'll be fine. But the next thing we notice is here is the charging contact itself. So the cap goes on here, we can just unscrew the cap and pull it off, and you'll get the exposed contacts. However, in order for this to work, you have to be able to see what the heck you're doing. So they provided a little incandescent lamp right here, so that when we are viewing our dosimeter it's actually illuminated for us and we don't have to look at it at the light and stick it on here and do that sort of thing so over here in the corner we have a variable uh, resistor or a little potentiometer and that has to do with increasing or decreasing the voltage applied to the dosimeter fiber so that little fiber i mentioned in there is electronically controlled and that fiber is controlled by this potentiometer through this capacitor circuit around here and out to the contacts right here so if we look in there, I'll have to show you in a different, uh, different view, but there is a variable transformer down here, and that is for a very interesting reason. Say you run out of batteries or something, and you need to adjust the device and still reset your dosimeter, because it's very important. There is actually an adjustment to be found right there in that variable transformer. So let's take a look at that here in just a second. And just a quick thought, with all new equipment, it's a good idea to pick up the original service manual for it, so if it screws up or blows up, you'll always have a reference point to find out what goes on in the circuit. And it also provides a lot of information about how you use the machine itself and what powers it and how it works. So we've got a circuit schematic across the pages here. I'll have to go across a few times to find the schematic. Here you go. It's basically just like the one on the inside, however, just a little bit larger and more detailed. So... We also have the pulse rate, or what this would look like on an oscilloscope. So if we hook that charging contact up to, say, an OS-8 or a USM-24C or some piece of equipment they would have had around at that time frame, you would get a waveform looking just like this coming out of the charging contact. So very interesting. I always recommend getting the manual. So this is what it looks like. Now let's take a look at that variable transformer that they mentioned in the manual in case your batteries run out. All right, so just a quick word of warning before you take this apart and go messing around with it. So before you ever put batteries in it, always the first thing you do is discharge capacitors. So you take an insulated or a metal device that you won't get shocked and you short out capacitors all over the thing and make sure that there's no residual voltage. And here's why. Most all tube equipment or most all equipment that you get you know, from the 50s or 60s, anything old contains high voltage because they didn't have low voltage transistors like we use nowadays. So most everything was, you know, in excess of 400 volts AC or 400 volts DC, depending on if it's a tube radio. And a lot of those old oscilloscopes are in the thousands of volts with three or four amps of current, which is enough to kill you before you hit the floor. So in this old device, we're only working with 220 volts. <laughs> so for a battery-operated device, 220 volts is quite a bit. But keep in mind, the Civil Defense Geiger counters actually run on 900 volts. So that'll really fry you. And these capacitors are still good because these are typically... Uh, the Civil Defense equipment is typically later than stuff I have from the 40s. So usually the capacitors are still good. Now let's take a look at the variable transformer. So right here... This is the actual transformer that helps with adjusting the dosimeter. And what you can do in the event of a battery failure where the battery voltage is too low to get a good reading or anything else, you can um, disconnect the incandescent lamp and then take an alignment tool and adjust the variable transformer to increase the voltage to the output charger. So, to, And of course that directly ties in with this. This is a little transistor on the other side and that singular transistor um, completes the oscillator circuit within this device so that it gives us our waveform for our charging output. 
So in the event of a uh, battery failure or whatever and you need to reset this device, you can always adjust this right here and get a higher voltage if you need to. So when we go from the potentiometer all the way to the right, all the way to the left, we start at 54 volts and then end up at 220 volts. So quite a bit of power going into that little pin. And uh, let's take a look at the other side so you can see the transistor. And last but not least, on the inside of this device, we got our one little transistor right here. Just a little bitty transistor, and this is the old CAN-style transistors, which we can still get today. And of course, if you'll remember, these transistors took the place of tubes, so this device won't get hot when it's in operation. The only thing that produces any heat here would be the incandescent lamp. So like we see on the inside, there's one little carbon resistor here, and there are some little capacitors in the back there, and that really is all there is in this circuit. There's not much, because all we're doing is increasing or decreasing voltage. So we got a few filter capacitors to kind of smooth out the voltage for our and uh, to complete our waveform from the oscillator circuit we find inside. So all we have is a little incandescent lamp that activates when we press down the charging contact so that our dosimeter can be viewed by looking at the lamp. And of course here's our spare. As you can see it's not connected. So really that's all there is inside of here. There's not much. So let's put batteries in it and actually use this to reset a dosimeter. Alright, as you can see we are looking at the dosimeter scale itself and if you'll notice on the screen we have been exposed to quite a bit of radiation so what we want to do is reset this thing. So currently we are looking at it through the scale on the charging contact of the charging unit. Now I apologize if it's a little shaky because I'm holding on to this uh, dosimeter pushing down on the charging contact and it's hard to do this in film at the same time. So what we want to do is go ahead and push it down firmly and as you can see the needle spiked a little bit and we're going to move the knob to the left or to the right to get this thing centered. So I'm going to go ahead and move the knob to the left just a little bit until we reach zero right there then I'm going to pull it off and now as you can see the scale is set to zero and we should be good to go all right now that we've seen this thing in action let's talk just real briefly about what to do if this thing shorts out or troubleshooting in case yours messes up so if you do come across one of these like I said the first thing you'll notice is the transistor in here and the rest of the circuitry so what actually happens when we put a dosimeter on here there's a little metal pin right above the light bulb and when the dosimeter actually makes contact, the light bulb illuminates. And if you press harder, you will actually engage the second contact, which allows current to flow to the dosimeter and change the reading on the scale. Now, all of this is done through an oscillator circuit and through this little transistor. Now, if on your dosimeter the needle, like you saw it moving from this way to this way on the scale, if your needle moves really quickly or shoots across the screen like that, which this one did, at first, um, there's a simple fix for that. The first fix is the um, is the capacitor. So if I move this thing over real quick, this capacitor down here has a tendency to go bad, and you can always replace it with a new one like this one. So that's a newer capacitor. Um, it's not the most new capacitor in the world, but it does work, certainly. So you can get rid of the old waxy thing that's in there and replace it with one of those, and that should solve your problems. And one more common problem is this transistor. If that transistor does fail on you, you will also have issues getting your dosimeter to work. So it may not be the actual dosimeter pin that goes bad. It may just be a transistor. Now, you're thinking, well, where do I get these? You can still get transistors exactly like the one that's in there. So this little guy here would be a suitable replacement for the transistor inside of there if it breaks. And you can also get a new transistor of the same type and replace that. So this is very basic circuitry if anything happens. So that's pretty much all there is to this unit. There's really not much else to it. And of course, if the light bulb breaks, you can always replace that one in there in the event of an emergency. So this pretty much sums up the video, and I hope you enjoyed it and got some information about this old unit. So, well, once again, this is High Voltage Mayhem, and I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you later.